We have a band. It's back together. Oh, okay. okay. I like that so, line. That's a good line. Way to start the off the show. Yeah, let's not bury the lead. Um, I have no, now. Listen, Jim has held somehow, some way, held down both John and Jim in the wrap up show for the last seven days. So I should start as the Padres win, salvage a game. They're fine. I'm going to talk people off the ledge tonight. If anyone needs to be talked off, they're 12 and 12. Everything's fine. Nobody's good in this division yet. You got four in Colorado. Go win three, and everything is shaping up fine. Not perfectly, but fine. But Jim, credit to you, man. Uh, you somehow did 15 hours of John and Jim for five days. You somehow did four or five wrap-up shows. I watched one on an airplane. Everyone's still alive. The channels still operate. The show is still on iHeartRadio and San Diego Sports 760. He died. So um, good stuff, man. Good to see you. I saw you yesterday at Snapdragon Stadium, but good to see you virtually. I, I think I prefer to see you virtually than actually in person. So it's well, good first, to see you. First off, uh, credit to me. Shout out to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for the entirety of the week um doing solo shows 15 15 hours of content solo and john mm. and jim 15 hours of crap does anyone here has anyone ever worked 15 hours in a week that's a huge number okay you know what here's the thing so for anybody out there that's like 15 hours i, I try i want you to just out there to sit down and for three hours i want you to just talk <laughs> and I want you to be semi interesting and I want you to sound like you know what you're talking about. Well, I don't know if you accomplished that, but there's a couple I things. I did not actually. Here's the not, thing though. No. That's that's your job. I know. That's the thing. <laughs> they pay it's my you job. to do that. They pay some of our viewers to, you know, be dentists or truck drivers or whatever. But someone's got to do it and I got hours. I did it. So you there you did. go. And no, I, I said it wasn't, it was, it wasn't. Wasn't that bad? Listen, there was some uh, there was some good in that week for the Padres. There was some bad. I mean, they came into today having lost three straight. So it was you know first time this year they had they had really struggled to score. They were not hitting with men in scoring position. Now they had had some games early in the month where they were scoring and they were hitting with men in scoring position. Today was one of those games where I feel as if this is who the Padres need to be. They need to capitalize on other teams, give them opportunities, and they just need to be opportunistic. What I mean by it is this: you're two two in the sixth inning. You score two runs on a single. It was single, three walks, E2. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know if they took advantage of a, a lot of those opportunities a year ago. We'd have to go back. But they're drawing a ton of walks for being a team that's been quasi-aggressive at the plate. They drew, I think, nine walks in this game. They had the three walks in the sixth inning. Um, Joe Musgrove was good. The bullpen was very good. Shoot, Robert Suarez, did you notice this? Suarez in the seventh inning was up. Because one, two, and three were due up if Musgrove didn't get that final out. So they were going to go to Musgrove, or excuse me, Suarez potentially as early as two outs in the seventh inning, not for the final seven outs, but maybe to record four outs in there, the seventh and the eighth inning. So uh, they capitalized on Blue Jays' mistakes after making some mistakes Friday and Saturday. And the Padres are 12 and 12. And for me, that that's fine. Again, it's not, I'm not going to say it's the greatest team in baseball history, but I have no issues with this team being 12 and 12 right now. So interesting little note here. Um, for the last two weeks, when this team scores six runs, I mean, they win every time. Oh, wow. Six runs? That shocks me. Their last, <laughs> going back to the uh, Chicago Cubs series where they had that 9-8 comeback win, in their wins, they have scored nine runs, ten runs, eight runs, six runs, seven runs, six runs, six runs. Are you going to tell me they score more runs in their wins than losses? I'm I'm ready for this. Let me. I'm sitting. I'm sitting. So okay, keep going. Let me guess. In their losses, they've scored like maybe one or two runs sometimes. Maybe a zero run performance in there. It, Did they win that one? It, it, in their losses, they've <laughs> scored one run, two runs, zero runs, one run, two runs. So basically, I've I, I've come to the conclusion that. When they score more runs than the other team, <laughs> they're very they're good. very good. They've been hard to beat. They're very good. But seriously, the point is, like, as of right now, it's been hard for them to win a low-scoring game. Th that's that is true. Yep. And you know, when they score a bunch of runs, four, five, six, more often than not. They're going to win those games. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. But when this team gets into ruts, like they did in this three-game losing streak, you know it's going to be very difficult because winning games, uh, two-one, 
three two. They won a three two game versus the the Cardinals uh, about three yeah. weeks ago. I remember that. But more often than not, if if you're asking them, hey, go out there and win a two one game, they're kind of all or nothing right now, which is not bad. And twelve and twelve, like I said the other night, they were eleven and eleven on Friday when I when I did the wrap up show, mm-hmm. and I said, I think if we went back a month and said at the twenty two game mark they're eleven and eleven. Would you take it? And I said, absolutely, I would. Dude, if if they are, I mean, let me ask you this. I mean, I'll fast forward till the end of June. And if it's the end of June and you're 40 and 40, it's not the end of the world. Because I mean, you lose 60 point, games, you win 60 games, and then you have 62 games left to, to hear your season. <laughs> exactly. I'm such I an mean, idiot. You, you, you got to hang around where you stayed within a game or two or three of some type of postseason spot, not yet, but later. And then you need to have a good week or two. Like at some point, you got to go six and one or 10 and two. And we don't know if they're capable of that as of yet or not, but we have no evidence to suggest they're not capable of it either. Um, as we get started, by the way, please subscribe. I know we blew past 6,000 while I was away. Let's try to get to 6,100 ASAP. Okay. Like that means as soon as possible, Jim. Uh, potentially as what? soon as this Rockies series, this four-game series that kicks off tomorrow in Denver, a critical series. We consider some of the Padres' struggles over the years at Coors Field. And, I mean, Colorado's awful. They're 5-17. and 17. They're flat-out terrible. <laughs> oh, they suck. So got to take three out of four there. I'm sorry. But please subscribe. We're trying to get to 6,100 subscribers. You can help us do that, whether you're here live or on replay. Smash the like button. How many likes do we need for this win that snaps a three-game losing streak? 300? At least, uh, I would say at least 200 tonight. Um, no, you got to raise those expectations. Fine, 250 since John's back. 275. So 275. please like this if you're here live or on replay. Um, follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We're going to get to every single super. I see him rolling in right now. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate the support. Um, you can click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to every super chat here tonight. Interact with those. It's a great way to support our work. And again, if you want to become a member, we have new emojis like the bogey emoji. How about bogey? Bogey. Red hot today. His first extra base hit in forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had two hits. He's hitting 200 on the season. He's got a 560 OPS. But he homered today, hopefully the start of something over the next couple of days in Denver as well for bogey. Let's get to some of these supers. Carlos, Carlos, man, loyal up, viewer. Carlos? He was texting me. He was texting me a little last week. So glad you're back in the Dude, chat, Carlos. I love it. I love it, Carlos. Thanks for hanging out. He says he misses the good old days of having good starting pitching. Uh, use old. That's factual. Uh, King Iffy. He's been up and down. Musgrove has not been great. I, I think that's fair. I think he was. I think he was good today. A couple of home he was runs. Really good today. Seven innings. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was good enough. Uh, we need games that we can win, even if the offense isn't great. I'm talking about Friday, Saturday. I, I'm. I'm. With you, I think, Jim, that's kind of what you said. I mean, can you win back-to-back two, one, or three, two games? They're not going to do that in Denver, you wouldn't think. But, you know, can they win oh, some close, low-scoring games? That's going to have to be part of the formula. Yeah, it it's great when you're winning games 6-3, 7-2, 10-1, mm-hmm. right? Those are awesome. And this team has scored a lot of runs this year, but they're going to have to have a stretch here because just how the lineup is, and, and I said this uh, on Friday, is when you have this type of lineup, with these players in it, you're going to have stretches where it's very difficult for you to score runs. It just is. Even though that Profar is having a really good start to his year, even though um, you know Jackson Merrill has had a very yeah. good start to his season, yes. uh, even though Campusano has had a really good start to his season as well, same with Dick Cronenworth hitting the three-hole, you're, you are just going to have stretches this year probably, and we just saw it with this three-game losing streak, mm-hmm. when um, it's going to be very difficult because you know, if you have a bottom of the lineup of like Tyler Wade, Higashioka, yep. Profar, Merrill, you're like that's it's it's a very like hit or miss. And so far, they've been a, a big hit this year, the bottom of the lineup. But when they're missing, it can look very ugly. Yeah, like I'm a little surprised. Like yeah, you know, Campisano ha- hasn't really hit for any power he, he's hit a little bit but he hasn't hit for power you talked about wade bogey obviously has struggled that puts it lightly um you know machado's played well here recently including today yeah. i think he's getting more comfortable as dh i still have the question of when i know it's only april whatever 21st so i don't think it's panic time like when but it's like when are you gonna be in the field and what are you gonna look like when you're in the field and how often will you play in the field so i i've got questions and i think that's fair um 
But at the end of the day, you look at the NL West and nobody's been good. And that includes the LA Dodgers. They have right. not been, they've been fine. I'm expecting them at some point to, to get in a run, but nobody's running away with this. Nobody's 20 and four, nobody's 19 and five. And the Padres are in fair standing, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, thanks again. He says this team can't be taken seriously down the stretch with Wade Rosario. Yeah, exactly. And those guys in our lineup, 12 and 12, not bad, but not great. We need consistency. I, I'm all, I, what Carlos is saying tonight, I'm, I'm in agreement with. And uh, if this team is in contention, the deadline, they're going to make a move like they're they just are. Absolutely. So that will happen. Uh, you'll probably see Donovan Solano here in the near future, uh, probably replacing Tyler Wade is my guess. Um, Tyler Wade, to me, just doesn't really bring much to this team. Unfortunately, well, he, because he doesn't. He doesn't. And I if you're going to keep it's like if it's a toss up between all right, who you two you keep in Paulie or, or, or Wade, I'll probably keep Paulie. But even then, um, he's going to need consistent time. Real quick, back to what he he mentioned before in his super chat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, you Darvish is hurt. Yep. Um, I think Michael King. Ha I mean, his last start was his long, his best start of his career. True, but I mean, he's also had. I mean, what about that start? Where was it? Dodger Stadium. Four home runs. Yeah, and I think Joe is. I, again, I will continue to sit here and say, I am not worried about Joe. I'm just not. He, he today, um, seven innings, three runs. Like that was good. No walks. You take that every time. Take it every time. He's the type of guy that's so far this season through his first what six or seven six starts. starts. Six I starts. Six. Yeah. Has has really grinded. It's 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 been a grind for him, no doubt about it. There hasn't been this like. Uh, blow away start or stretch where he's been really yep. good, but um, his last two starts here, his, excuse me, let me pull this up. I think, uh, if you look at his game logs, here. yeah, yeah. So, all right, three of his last four starts, guys, three of Joe's last four starts, all right, six innings, one run, six innings, three runs, seven innings, three runs. Mm -hmm. The only blow up in there was against Chicago at home where he went four innings, gave up four runs. Yep. So three of his last four starts have been all quality starts. He's gone at least six innings in those three of his last four starts. And um, for me, if you if he's doing that and he still doesn't have like his best stuff and he might be working through some things, that's that's good to me. All right, well, let me ask you this. I, I agree with what you're saying, and, and I'm on Team Musgrove. Make no mistake. I've said it a lot. I said I'm not going to read too much into the first month of the season, and I'm not. But here's here's my question. So in 2021 with the Padres, he had a 318, okay? More right. course, 180 innings. The following year, 293. Last year, went healthy, a 305. Here's what I'm asking you. Is he going to replicate – I'm not saying innings – but is he going to replicate that type of ERA? Is he going to have a 3.2, which would be the highest of his career as a Padre? Is he going to have a 3.20 ERA or better? And I'm not saying he has to, and I don't have an answer definitively one way or the other, but I'd probably argue he's more in the three and a half to four range if I was guessing this year than he's going to be in that 2.9 to 3.3 range. That's just my speculation based on what I've seen. It's early. It's only six starts, but you know, he's going to make 30, 31, 32. I mean, it's not nothing. So, like, do you think he's going to have a three ERA this year, or is that overly optimistic? Because that's who he's been as a Padre. No, I think he will have a th uh, Do you? Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, I mean, six if, innings, three runs, and seven innings, three runs is not a three ERA. No, it's not. But um, they've won both won games. Four. I, I know. know. I, I, I agree with you. And. I I view him as a guy that at the end of the year you're gonna look up at his stats and he's gonna be around the 180 plus inning mark. He's gonna have a mid three ERA and he doesn't okay. here here here's here's the thing with Joe and, and the, with the rotation this year. If Joe mm -hmm. at the end of the year has a three five ERA, yep, okay, that's um, solid. But Dylan Cease has a two two ERA. That's that. That's what you need. You needed at least one guy to step up and be that ace. And right now, it's been Dylan Cease of the three of the top three. And then the other two are going to have to be just very solid for you. You, we'll see. 
Uh, I don't like how he's already on the IL this season. I just, I just don't. Um, but Joe, I just trust. I do. I, 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 well, I just trust that he's going to go out there and he's going to uh, battle for for innings and he's going to give this team chances to win every time he's out there. No, I I agree with you. I do. I'm just wondering if it'll be to his level of quote unquote excellence. I'm not questioning him at all. I'm not saying he's going to have this bad year, but is if he takes a step back, it's fine if Dylan C says a two two. Blake's not a two two. Yeah, he wasn't good. But um, Musgrove also wasn't healthy. He didn't pitch. But I'm saying that's why. You, but he also can't take a step back. You're right. Now listen, if you, I mean, here's a, I hate to. I, I need to be the realist here. I think he'll have his career high ERA as a Padre, which isn't bad. I, I'll take that over. I think he has a 3.19 ERA or higher this year, and I'll take the under on innings. I don't think he, he pitches 181 innings either because that's just the realist in me, a guy that threw 100 innings. Now he's getting the extra start because of Korea. He's already made six starts. It's April 21st. That's crazy. I know. So maybe with an extra start, he can accomplish that. It's just, again, like coming off injury, I, I just feel like maybe they're asking – you're asking for a really good year from Joe Musgrove, maybe a career year from Joe Musgrove, and we'll see oh. if it's in the cards or not. He's been great. I mean, he, he's I, been better here recently. It's just I, I don't know if we're going to be consistently seeing you know seven innings, one run. Is he going to get into one of those runs where he makes six or seven starts and every single start is six plus innings, one run or less? Maybe. I, I trust him. I um, feel good with him on the mound for this team until proven otherwise. For right now, you know that's like. Fair. I, I, I feel good with him. I feel good with him on the mound and when he goes out there. And I feel like every time he's out there, this team has a chance to win the game. That's fair. Um, all right, Carlos, thanks again. He says, if we don't go three and one in Colorado, this team cannot be taken seriously. <laughs> I'm scared pitching will suck. I mean, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, obviously, the Padres have not played the Rockies well really at any point. Um, but certainly in recent history in Denver, this is a Rockies team. Again, I mentioned it a moment ago. They're five and seventeen, and that includes a win today yeah. against this, uh, Seattle. It's a four-game series, and and I'm with you. I think it's like you don't have to go four now. I mean, it's hard to do against any team, obviously, especially on the road. But you know, it feels like it, we're going to be saying wasted opportunity if they don't go three and one. Like two and two or worse is like you're treading water against the Rockies. I get it. You're on the road, and I get it. It's quote unquote early. I said it. But it, it feels like the type of series when you get four of them, you go take three of them, and you feel really good leaving Denver. So beginning of the year, I mentioned that in your division, it's going to be tough. It, it, it's been a, a, a slow start for everybody in the NL West. Um, I yep. thought the NL West was going to be much better. I thought it was going to look more like the AL East because the AL yep. East to me is the best division in baseball right now. Right no, now no, no, no questions asked. I thought the NL West at this point to start out could be viewed as, oh, that probably is the best division in baseball just because mm -hmm. of the talent they brought in. I mean, every team loaded up and every team just had big signings, and it's been a very disappointing start for everybody. I wouldn't say it's been a disappointing start for the Padres. I think I think you could argue that it's been um, what you like might have expected, something like a realistic yep. expectation for the team. Um, and so I wouldn't put them in a category of disappointing start at all. I would put the Diamondbacks, Giants, and Dodgers in disappointment start for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But the point I made was, you know, the Rockies, we all knew were going to suck. It's very easy to see, and their record shows it so far. You have to take advantage when you play the Rockies because you play them 12 or 13 times this season. You just have to. If the Dodgers, as of right now, they look mortal. They don't look like a team that's going to win 115 games this year. And if by some chance they don't go on a, a stretch this year, because they usually always do in the middle of a season, where you they go like 22 and one, <laughs> right? Like some crazy stretch. There is, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think like, eh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And if, if you have, if you want to have any chance, of that maybe turning into a real possibility, you have to beat up on the Rockies and the teams that are beneath you, like the Marlins and whoever else you play that sucks right now in baseball. You can't be losing series or not be not taking advantage of opportunities when you face teams like the Rockies this week. Here's the amazing thing. I didn't I didn't remember this. Do you? They were nine and four against the Rockies last year. Nine and four. Yeah, that's good. And they weren't good. 
um, the Rockies or the Padres, really. The year before, 2022, you know when they went to the National Championship Series, right? They couldn't beat, beat them. the Dodgers, you may recall. They couldn't beat them. Nine and ten. Yeah, they, they was, nine was, and ten. Yeah, they couldn't beat them. So no, but again, last year, and again, there were some teams they played awfully against. They lost a home series to the Royals last year when they. Well, that would that's them. that's that's bunching it with yeah. my. My theory, yeah, I know like when you face the bad teams, yeah, exactly. But it's like this you know, a year ago, nine and four. I'll take if someone told me right now the Padres go nine and four against the Rockies, I'm in. I mean, would that, you love yeah. to go 10 and three? Sure, but it's yeah. like, I mean, that's a that's a 700 winning percentage against someone for 13 games, and you're playing half those games on the road in Denver yeah. where it's weird. Yeah. If I'll take it right now, give me nine and four through the 13 games, I'll take yeah. it five games over 500. I'll take a- it absolutely. I take that in a second. Um, no questions asked. Um, and we know with every baseball season, there's that one team they play where they just can't beat. They just, they just, for for whatever reason, it's like we just can't beat these guys. Mm-hmm. And they might be one of the worst teams in baseball, or maybe the best team in baseball. I don't know. You just hope that it's not um, one of the worst teams in baseball because then it makes it harder. Because when you go up against the good teams, and you know, it just uh, overall. When they take on teams that are going to lose close to 100 games this year, they cannot slip up this season. Last year, I don't know who it was off the top of my head, but there were probably a good amount of teams that they did not fare well against that were teams that were not even close to the postseason. Mm -hmm. And that's what bit them in the ass. Um, They did good against the Rockies. That was good. That was great. Check. What 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 did Schilte say today? Boom. Check. Like you did, you did, you did that. You did that last year. Boom. Check. Uh, (laughs) You got to do that against the Rockies this year. Boom. Check. Whoever else, when you face the Marlins, you have to win that series. Boom. Check. Boom. Check. So um, starts tomorrow when you face one of the worst teams in baseball. Um, So I I agree with the sentiment. Like if you (laughs) knock on what they don't, but say they lose three or four of the Rockies. Well, then That's you've lost the all goodwill. At, the, at that problem. point, you haven't done anything. I mean, at that point, we would say they've been disappointed. They'd be two games under 500. They would have wasted four games against Colorado. Right. I mean, two and two, again, you're treading water. You're 14 and 14. Nothing's been determined. You feel hey, like overall nine and four versus them. You take that. Missed opportunity. But, yeah, I mean, you got to be thinking three and one here. I mean, yeah. you know, four and oh is ideal. But I think you're thinking three and one here, and you feel good about it. Um, six one I Cam, thank you for the membership. Thank you for the super. He says kind of a flat series, but a good win. Yeah, it was definitely flat. I mean, they trailed in every game. It was five nothing, four nothing, whatever. Yeah. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Bogey, Toddy, Swarry, welcome back, John. Thank you. And Jim did well. Congratulations, Jim. Oh, thanks. Checks in the That's mail. Awesome. Little Checks in the mail. Jim did yeah. well. I all of GSD did fine. <laughs> And beat the Rockies. Um, yeah, it's more okay. So that you know, I go back to last year too. When they fall behind early, a year ago the game was over. That hasn't been the case this year. But this Toronto series played more like 2023. You go down five nothing. You go down four nothing at home. There's Marine layer. Yeah, I they said it. Score. They couldn't score. They anything. can't score. They can't score. It, they, can't score. They, couldn't, they couldn't hit with men in scoring position. They were one in twenty. Or, right. Yeah. With men in scoring position over a two or three game stretch, they were scoring no runs over you know 10, 15, 20, 25 innings over a couple of games. Um, so when you avoid that, like today, you don't go down three or four runs, right? Everything changes. And they took yep. advantage of miscues by Toronto today, and they got the starting pitching Carlos had asked for. You get the seven innings. I mean, you're giving yourself a chance to win. You're getting seven innings from your starting pitching, and they're just going to – I don't know what the true identity is going to be, Jim. I think they'll be pesky. I think they will overcome deficits. I don't think they're going to be this high-flying offense all year, if I was guessing. I'm thinking more lean on pitching, Musgrove, King, Suarez, bullpen, than lean on scoring the six, seven, eight. You know, Again, if they can settle in that four-and-a-half to five-and-a-half runs and get good starting pitching, I think that'll be more than enough. But I do think they'll be peskier, so to speak deal with adversity better than they did a year ago. And we've, we've already seen that. It's not like we saw it one time this year. In 22 yeah. games, or excuse me, 24 games, th- that's kind of played out. They've dealt with adversity, and they've, they've won some games that you would think that they wouldn't win. They already have some big-time come at, comebacks under their belt this year. We're to, 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 you know, reference, um, to go back on. Um, yeah, th- they're going to be a team that I feel like is going to be very pesky. Um, they're going to have some big time moments. They're, sc- they're going to have games where they score a lot of runs. They're going to have a l- games where they can't hit a blind side of a barn. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing that I think has to stay consistent for them to make the postseason 
is the pitching and the bullpen. Um, if you get consistency from that, you're gonna have you're gonna have outings where it doesn't look good from the pitch starting pitching. You just are. Um, but you get consistency from your rotation. You hope that no one gets no one else gets like you know injured here, and you have a fairly healthy rotation throughout the season. And the bullpen with Robert Suarez at the back end, Bundy Peralta, Yuki Matsui, Tom Cosgrove. Um, you feel, you know, Del Santos. Yeah. You feel good because that bullpen so far has been, um, you know, started out a little shaky, rocky there. But as of late, John, I mean, you look at some of these numbers these guys have in this bullpen and you're like, you know, sub one ERA, sub one ERA, sub one ERA, one, two ERA, a two, two O ERA. Like, you know, they've been very solid. Mm -hmm. I agree very with that. Solid. And, and with we Robert thought Suarez being like unhittable <laughs> is yeah. a big weapon. And we thought their bullpen would be very good. And I do think it will be very good. And I think it's playing out like that right now as well. It's a good point. Uh, William, thank you for the super chat. Guys, if you're here, subscribe. Trying to get to 6,100 subscribers during the Rocky series. So please subscribe. Hit the like button for us. Thank you for the supers. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to every single one of them. Padres over the Blue Jays Sunday afternoon at Petco 6-3, salvaging game three after dropping the first two games of the series. Uh, William says Colorado series is important. Last year's team couldn't beat bad teams, no doubt. I uh, think Pirates and National Series. Yeah, good point. I would say yeah. Royals, Pirates, Nats. Um, I mean, that's a lot of teams to struggle against. That's how you knew you weren't going to be very good. It's it's one thing to do it against one team, Jim, to your point. If it's one, they're going to have one bad series this year against a bad team. Do we all agree? If I beat yes. one bad series against a bad team? Yes, I believe so. But avoid four or five of them. You don't want to yeah. play two bad series against the Nats, two bad series against whomever else. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how I look at it, and I agree with you, William. Like they had series last year, they swept the they swept the World Series champion Texas Rangers. Yeah, right before. And the then they line, yeah. lost, I think, like two or three to the Pirates, and you're just like, what? Mm -hmm. And that I remember when the Nationals came in. You're right. Remember when the Nationals came in last I year, do. and they just couldn't be. I, they just they yep. had a lot of bad games and a lot of bad series versus bad teams. Yep. And that, uh, you know, in the end, was the nail in the coffin because you played bad baseball versus too many bad teams. You played good against the Rockies, to your point. Yeah, but it has to be consistency versus the bad teams, because um, mm -hmm. you know you're not. A, a, you, you can't be expected to always pr beat the Dodgers two out of three. You know, you yeah, can't exactly. expect it to always beat the Braves two out. Of, like you, you got to make sure that the teams that are beneath you and like they're they're not. They're not going anywhere. Um, yeah, you can't lose those series. You just can't. I agree. Uh, Carlos, thank you again, man. He says uh, his worry with Musgrove is his stuff. Fastball looks slower, less lethal. I, I don't. I'd have to look at those. Like it's down. It's down a couple numbers. notches. His his, his okay. velocity is down a little bit. Um, I mean, and, and yeah. Look, he says lack of strikeouts in this start worries me. Three today. He's playing too much mm. on contact. Well, let's just look at it this way, real quick. That in in six starts, and again, for me, they're not end all be all starts. They might not even be any indicators at all. Maybe I, I I'm fine with judging them May twentieth if we want to do that. I'm fine with it. But if we, we have to have a frame of reference, we need to talk about today because it's today. His WHIP is one point five three, which is crazy high. Again, frame of reference coming off injury has pitched better recently than the first start or two. His career, by the way, is a 1.18 whip. It's 1.53 this year. He has struck out 23 batters in 31 to third innings, which is crazy low. Um, in his career, he's better than a strikeout per inning as a starter, just over it. He's like 9.1 strikeouts per every nine. This year, he's like, I don't know, six and a half strikeouts per every nine. And again, it's early. He's coming off injury. There may be a lot of reasons to explain his first six starts and I'm fine with, we can table it and talk about it in a month, but people obviously want to discuss it, including Carlos. And again, he's pitched well recently, but yeah, is he going to replicate? That's the only question for me. Is he going to replicate numbers? He has had previously as a Padre and maybe not. And there's a reason as to not, but I think that's a fair question. Will he be that guy or not this year? As long as he's healthy, I trust. Mm -hmm. um, I trust him. I trust Ruben Niebla. I know they're working every day. Right, it's not something we're like, oh yeah, I pitched, I pitched okay today. Like, and by the way, he pitched, he, pitched, he pitched better than okay, going seven mm -hmm. and three. Um, should be what a quality start is in baseball, but anyway, well, it is. 
Well, no, what I meant like is like the minimum. Like you oh, can't go six. Yeah. If you go six and three, that's a four five ERA. Yeah, that's not great. It's not like legendary. Yeah, it should be a seven and three. That should be the okay. minimum for. Uh, How about six and two? Three sure. ERA. Sure, six and two. That's good. Yeah, but um, yeah. Is if he's long, is, I mean, if he's giving you seven innings, like that's good. That's good. <laughs> you know. It, the problem would be if he can't get past like five, you know, with the stuff well, being down. Right. So, okay. To your point, I mean, he's only gone more, more than six once, right? That was today. So he's two and two thirds, five and two thirds, six, four, six, seven. And the yeah. six, I'll take six every single time out. Every I'm time fine with that. Every six time. every single time. So we did with Snell last year. He only gave you six innings and he yeah, won the average six per start. Because yeah. he threw 180 innings in 30 starts. Right. So six but, is good. True. But obviously Snell's effectiveness on the mound. Not so much this year, though. Damn effective last year. No. <laughs> Not yet. Um, Caleb, thank you, man. He says, "What?" I love this question. Thanks for the super. He says, what's your grade based on the last or first 24 games? You Thanks want for to a first? rap question tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, let's say, let's do three, two, one. Then you can say anything from A, B, C, D, F and you can do a minus or a plus or whatever. It's like okay. A minus, right. F plus. And we're going to say three, two, one, then grade. Okay. okay. Right. Three, two, one, B minus. B. That's pretty I was gonna close. Go B. I was going to go B minus. Yeah. I, I've been saying they're fine. I don't. So I get, I get 84 is, out of 100. 84 out of 100. That's not a B minus. That's just a solid B. Well, a B minus is an 81 to 83. So and I, I don't know. I said 84. <laughs> yeah, so that's splitting hairs. I mean, I know. Yeah, I think they've been better than average, yeah. but not a lot better than average at 12 and 12. Uh, I, I would say their offense has been a surprise for sure. Um, you know, Profar and Merrill have been, and Cronenworth put in there as well, have been all pleasant surprises. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Everyone's bullpen, saying B minus. The bullpen has been good. And Robert Suarez is dominant, but what brings it down to a B minus is, you know, Bogarts has been awful. Awful. Take away, take away today when he was he was good. Uh, Manny's been average. Yeah, he's, like he's been, been fine. He's had good moments. Like he's been a C, know, but he's been average. Yeah. Um, and then the bottom of the order, like the the bench, has been awful. Um, and the uh. I would say Darvish and Musgrove; those two guys have been underwhelming so far as mm -hmm. a as as a pair. Yeah, definitely, I think um, that's fair. So that's why it brings it down to a B for me. But then you have, I mean, Dylan Cease, Tatis, like those guys have been clear cut, you know, huge, huge performers this year so far. It's just he was like a foot away from a, he was like a foot away from like a grand slam today. So I go say B. that again. Tatis was a foot away from oh, a grand foot away slam. from a grand yeah. slam. It's great. I, again, it's like, how do we, it's like, how do you come up with a grade? It's like when you have a chemistry class, maybe it's based on a test or maybe another class, you have two quizzes and a test. If yeah. the grade is based on trends, I'm with you. I like some of the trends. I'm yeah. willing to go be on trends. But if I'm doing the proof of the pudding, I still gave them a break because they're 12 and 12, which is flat out average. Right. But I said B minus. I'm willing to give them the benefit. I think if you said truly they're average, then they're a C. But I think they've played better than a C. I think you could argue maybe they could have another. I mean, they've they've overcome some deficits. Otherwise, maybe they're ten and fourteen right now. You're right. You're right. So it's like you know, I think we're splitting hairs. I'm with you. B is fair. B minus, I think is fair. C plus, truthfully, I think is fair. They are twelve and twelve. Which again, it's not the end of the test. The end of the test is after one sixty two. So yeah. I'm I'm willing to bend left or right on what they've done so far. And I, yeah, I think they're, I think they've been solid. Again, I think we may look up after Thursday in Denver and say. Wow, they're fifteen and thirteen. That's that's so. good, you know. Or we might look up and say they're fourteen and fourteen or worse, and be like, you know, this is kind of, you know, a, we asked for a faster start maybe than this. You know, there've been some good, there's been some bad, and yeah. um, so we, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, it's. I will say this. I will say this. Not just it's way different. Not just the team, the managers, way different. I'm not saying better. But I'm saying the manager's way different. What happened Saturday with the Schilt blow up after Profar got tossed is, I mean, I guess you're kind of seeing a little bit of like 
who Mike Schilt is. I mean, he is an ardent defender of his players, like to the nth degree. I mean, was was I, Musk was uh, Melvin not? Not like that. No, not at all. No, if he calls out his players publicly, and he would, and to, he wouldn't go that hard. What Schilt did saying "f you" in the face of an umpire is not something Bob Melvin would do. Correct or incorrect? And he would not publicly back his players the way Mike Schilt has publicly backed his players. Not even close. I no will it. agree with you on the post games. The <laughs> post games are, are completely different. The post games are for for Melvin was just as straightforward as you possibly could be. I appreciated that, but um, I don't think right. Melvin would have gotten tossed in the first inning yesterday. I think so. I think he would have. Well, I think I mean I'll, I'll take the hot take of I don't think Profar should have. I don't think Profar should have put his manager in a position to get tossed. I don't think if you're you cannot get tossed in the first inning when you've had a good year and your cat and your bench is awful, even with I, a, a bad strike three call. It's the first inning. I just think it's a little short sighted to forget that Bob Melvin has and was um ejected from plenty of games while the manager of the Padres. And if you just search up Bob Melvin Padres ejections, there are plenty of times that he went out and got ejected for defending whatever the kid, whatever happened on the field, like all managers, but like not, all managers, not, not like Schilt did yesterday. Well, maybe Schilt, the, Schilt that, has a screw loose. Maybe I don't know. Do, am I wrong? I mean, yesterday was. I mean, I don't think it's recency bias. What 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 Schilt did yesterday is a is I, I don't know it was pretty far in my opinion, and I'm fine with it. I mean, if you're going to get tossed, get tossed. I mean, if you get your money's worth. So to speak, I don't. And maybe I'm. Maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe it's because it's been time. But I don't recall Melvin going that hard at an umpire. He, he did at least not verbally like that. He did. He I mean, he said "f you" in the umpire's face. I mean, probably. <laughs> I mean, maybe. it's not. Maybe maybe it's not. Didn't get caught on camera. But like, I would guarantee you, I'd bet a lot of money that Bob Melvin has told an umpire "fuck you" before. Well, maybe Aaron's I just here. don't recall him doing it in San Diego. He has think of it. He's been ejected. He was ejected plenty of times and first sticking up to his players. No, to yeah. His players yeah, but I mean, all thirty of the managers are. I don't think there's a manager in baseball that doesn't get ejected. It's not my point that he got ejected. I'm just saying they're they're. I just feel like stylistically, especially. My, I mean, post game you can't compare them. So it's far. I mean, there's nothing similar. Bob Melvin was very workmanlike post game, very right. I mean, he didn't give you a, a deep glance into what was occurring. But Mike Schilt is very rah rah, you know, bogey making a good baseball play there. I'm going to tell him to do a 10 out of 10. It's just, I think it's, again, I'm not saying one's better or worse. I'm really not because I've, I think some people tell you Schilt's been better. I'm not, I'm not saying Schilt's been better. I'm just saying that they're, they're different managers. It feels like maybe the team is, I don't know. Maybe the team responded to Melvin really well in 2022 because of the way he managed, and maybe they'll respond really well to Schilt because of the way he manages. Um, maybe. I, I, I just know. think that me personally, seeing on social media, like just again, I see it in the chat as well. Like uh, Bob would have never done this or backed his players or, or whatever. Like, of course he backed his players. Sure. And, and and people are like oh Bob was soft not Schilt like okay tell me tell me you have recency bias without telling me you have recency bias you know Bob's not here he went to San Francisco of course you're not going to like him because he's not the manager here but when he was the manager here every single buddy in the chat that was talking is talking shit about Bob Melvin right now loved Bob Melvin so mm, no no but that's that's not accurate because people when they were winning when they were winning Bob Melvin, when they well, were winning everyone likes every manager when you're winning and they, exactly. they would like me. Exactly. They were like me. They so that that of course, but no. Last year, people called him Sleepy Bob, asleep at the wheel. I mean, calling they out lost. his team. They lost. That's I why. Know. If this I team agree. loses, no one's gonna like Mike Schilt. That's how it goes. I agree. 
But this isn't about like hate. I'm just saying they're different. Um, okay, let's get to our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz, uh, Farmers Insurance. If you have insurance needs, Mark is your guy. He's been with us since day one on the wrap-up show. And if you support our work, if you're looking for an insurance agent, if you want to save money, if you want a great insurance agent, trust me, he's great because I've had him for three policies now for years, life insurance, earthquake insurance, homeowner's policy as well. Click the link in the description down below. Mark is a lifelong massive Padres fan, born and raised in San Diego, runs a great insurance business, can save you $750 or more by switching your insurance. And if you ever have a claim like I had to file, file it in 2022, he's going to save you time and money. He's going to make it just so simplistic. I had no clue where to turn when we had an issue and Mark took care of all of it. So auto, home, renter's life, earthquake, whatever it is, if you need an insurance agent before you renew your policy, get in contact with Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. All his information is below on the ticker, mnimits at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap-up show sent you. Um, what else? I mean, I thought that was obviously we didn't have a show Saturday. Um, again, I thought a lot got made of Profar getting ejected and Schilt, you know, what we caught on film, what Schilt said and got tossed as well. Um Again, that's not really the – it wasn't the end-all, be-all of what, like, happened in the in the game Saturday. Again, they fell behind early, and again, they struggled with men in scoring position. Even today, they were one for five with men in scoring position. I think they're two for 25 um, in their last four games, maybe, with men in scoring position. So they've come back to earth there as well. Um, and it's not that – it was yesterday, so who even cares? So Profar got tossed. It was a – don't get me wrong. It wasn't a strike that he got tossed on, but – I don't love getting tossed in the first inning of a game because umpiring sucks. Umpires are bad. That's not the only example of a called third strike this year that was out of the zone. But a lot of times when you have called third strikes out of the zone, players don't get ejected. Yeah, I mean, I, was it a overall soft ejection? Yeah. I mean, you don't to eject a guy in the first inning for just standing there and throwing out his, mm -hmm. his helmet. Like, come on, give me a fucking break. Like, talk about talk about being soft. That was a soft ejection. Um, uh, it was what it was. I mean, thankfully it wasn't Manny, like you know, oh or God. Tatis or something. Like, I mean, Profar has been really good for this team, yep. but still. Anyway, right. um, and to do that, to eject the, I, the balls and strikes, these umpires suck. The, a lot of them, predominantly. Well, that's not, why it's going to be robots in like a week, right? Um, but to eject the guy in the first inning for just standing there and throwing down his bat and helmet, I thought it was a, a very soft move. But also Profar, also, Profar has to realize, you know, maybe I shouldn't be pushing the buttons that quickly. <laughs> right. We don't have anyone on our bench. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I've been playing really well for my this team, so I need to not cross that line. Maybe he didn't think he crossed that line. I don't think he crossed right. that line, but, but still. Um, and maybe he has a history with this guy. I don't know, but it was the first inning, um, and you got to you just can't let that happen right away. Who do you think is determining that Xander Bogarts is going to continue to lead off? Because heading into Saturday, I mean, it was season long. Saturday had a hit. Today he had two. I'm guessing at this point, if they've stuck with him this long, and he's kind of had a, a day or two where he's been better, specifically today. I'm just assuming it's his for a long time. Um, so is this Schilt making that decision? Is the front office saying stick with him longer? Again, Schilt's the biggest supporter of all of his players. He, he might leave him there for 162, even if he hits 200 this year. Um, but I guess I'm not surprised he would stay there. It's only 24 games. I'm somewhat surprised at his overall numbers, but again, it's only 24 games. But I mean, do you think this is a Mike Schilt thing? You think this is an organization thing, or you just think it's Xander saying it doesn't matter where I'm batting, I'm just not hitting? Uh, I think this is a Mike Schilt thing. I think this is a um, this is how he manages. This is how he writes his lineups. He likes yeah. things to be consistent. He doesn't want mm -hmm. things constantly changing. I, I, f I feel like Mike Shield is a very organized person. Hmm. Like I feel like he is a very organized person. He has like plan like lists and planners and you know, I feel like his house is very organized. I feel like his <laughs> office and the clubhouse is very organized. And why I say that is because everything I feel like he's a neat and clean person. And when you're a neat and clean person, you don't like to change things. Like 
you're not the type of person that in your house you're always moving furniture to like change up the vibe of the house to see, like oh, i don't really like this so i'm gonna move here i don't like this so i'm gonna move. like you keep it a certain way and you have a certain routine and i sure. feel like mike schilt who is a baseball lifer you know has a certain th- routine and unless something just unless xander doesn't use today to to get hot and actually you know be what you know play better right you are going to see a bogey toddy crony manny whoever else hitting one two three four five probably you know i think the only spot this year for most of this season that we're going to see like change in will be the five spot like between kimmy and Profar, Proe, and Pro-y. you know, Campy, and potentially a bat if they pick one up. But I feel like the top four, that's gonna stay pretty consistent unless Bogarts has like a falling off of the planet. Of the cliff. I mean, but the truth is I, I'm fine with it because at the end of the day, Bogarts is playing and nobody's saying he shouldn't play. I mean, they're paying him to play. Nobody's advocating for him to not play, even if this slump continues for weeks on end. And the truth is, if he's slumping, it's not like just moving him in the lineup automatically changes anything. No. He's going to play. So, right. okay, maybe he gets one less plate appearance or maybe, uh, you know, whatever. You could argue the merits of moving him or not, but if he's not hitting, he's not hitting. And if he's playing, he's playing. So, this is an example of a young player that is mired in a slump, and then you have a decision to make. Does he go to the bench? Does he go to AAA? You have no decision. He has to play. It's not and It's not Mike Schilt's decision that he has to play. It's the organization's decision. He's flat out got to play, and he's got to be productive. So that's why I'm almost like, okay, yeah, he hasn't hit as a leadoff man, albeit he hit today, and hopefully that continues in Denver. But, I mean, if you're going to play him, who cares if he's batting first or second? Who cares if he's batting first or fifth? I mean, does it really matter? If he's going to hit 200, who cares where he's batting? I mean, he's hit 200. Yeah. It, um, and like I said, unless he falls off a cliff, I don't feel like he's moving from the leadoff spot, and especially after today, giving two hits, a home run. Um, he's definitely not moving off the leadoff spot, for sure. The no, only way he's doing well. <laughs> no, 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 no. The only way is, I mean, they're, like Kevin told me on Friday, like, you know, this is not something that they're just saying, oh, screw it, whatever. We'll just keep putting him in the layoff spot. Like, no, there's discussions. There, there are there are discussions, and they were getting pretty close <laughs> to moving Bogey off the leadoff spot just because you have a guy that, that just has not been able to do anything of substance there for the for the first 24 games of the season. You know, at some point it's like, okay, maybe we should make a change here at the top of the lineup. Well, let me ask you this. Um, A, where would you move? It just hear me let's pretend like you know he hasn't homered today you know what's the difference i mean he's hitting 200 but let's just pretend right. like he's hitting 190 right now he's got a 550 ops so he goes where in the lineup and who moves to the top of the lineup uh i said uh you know hasan kim but the more i think about it the more I really like Fernando Tatis Jr. in the in leadoff spot, right? That's my always vote. Um, but then it's like a trickle down effect. Who you put in the two hole? That's you my know? point. It's like, well, now you got Bogarts batting second. <laughs> right? Have you really changed anything? Right? Are you gonna put Kim hitting second and Bogarts hitting fifth? Like, are you gonna put Jackson Merrill hitting second? Like, you know, at some point probably. I mean, if he's hitting three hundred six weeks from now. But do you want to go lefty lefty with Merrill and Cronenworth? Right, or do you move Manny back to the three spot and put Jake in the, in the cleanup spot? Like, there's a this lot of things. Maybe, this is why maybe they haven't done anything. Right, they don't have many options. I mean, I don't know if you guys yep. noticed, but um, they have no depth. <laughs> their depth sucks, uh, plain and simple. Uh, their bench is really bad, and so because of that, you don't have much wiggle room with these players and with these guys. So, again, I I, I don't anticipate. A uh, Bogart's moving off the leadoff spot unless at the end of the month it looks really bad. Yeah, I think it would even be potentially beyond the end of the month. But but they're having conversations. I do know that they are definitely having, having conversations. conversations. About, they're having conversations, and it's, this is not something that they're just going to try to plow through a brick wall. Through mm. you know, like they they are really monitoring this. Is like, look, we can't 
if he's going to struggle for the next like two weeks here at the end of the month, and we look up and he's still struggling in the leadoff spot, like we're probably going to have to make a change. What's a little weird is you have like prototype. I don't know if prototype is the right word, but you have productive leadoff hitters, like recent productivity. Hassan Kim, very productive as a leadoff hitter. I get it. He's had a slow start. Um, Fernando Tatis Jr. has elite numbers as a leadoff hitter in his career. Now he's got elite numbers in general. But like you got options to bat there. I don't know what your option is with where you play Xander Bogarts. I, I, I'd be let me let me put it this way. I think between now and the end of the season, they'll make a real change. Not a game. Who cares if Xander Bogarts doesn't play one game leadoff because he sits, whatever. I'd be surprised if Bogarts leads off all year, just based on what we've seen. I think at some point there'll be a real change and they'll move yeah. it. I don't uh, know when, but that that's my guess. Yeah, I would be too, especially if he's going to struggle. Um, like if he, uh, I, I mean, he's a th- career almost 300 hitter. You expect him to be around 300. You mm-hmm. expect him to be most of the year. You know, he ended the last year with a 285 average, but a lot of that was because of what he did in September. I mean, when you hit yeah, 418 in September with a almost 1100 OPS, it's going to help out your numbers, you know? No doubt. Um, but you have to do those. You have to have those months in when it matters. And that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, like real real quick on Bogarts. And this was heading. This is baseball reference. So it's not updated today. So this doesn't give him credit for the home run and the two hits today. But just hear me out. 177 games is a Padre. Okay? Mm-hmm. 753 OPS. 1,264 games as a Red Sox, 814 OPS, 61 points. Yeah. It, that's not the small sample size, 177 games. I mean, no. you don't need me to tell you, but the stats back it up. He's really struggled. Yeah. I mean, that's for to get paid the way he's getting paid and to be a 750 OPS player for 177 games is nowhere near good enough. Simple as that. So it's not my job to figure it out. And yeah, no. it kind of is Mike Schiltz, but ultimately it's AJ Preller's job mm-hmm. to figure this thing out. And it has to be done. It absolutely has to be done. And I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. And I don't know how it's going to happen or how it won't happen. But it, this can't continue. He can't have another. And not like last year was a, a complete debacle. It just wasn't good. Um, but he can't have another. Oh, it just wasn't good year. I mean, what are you going to think going into 2025 if that's the case? Um, all right, let's uh, remind you about our friends over at Aura. Great, great company. Uh, their co-founder, Will, is a huge fan of this channel. He's a lifelong Padres fan. He's a native San Diego, and they've got offices right here on Liberty Station in San Diego. If you want to get healthier, look no further than Aura plant-based nutritional products, every single one of them, including the probiotic I've taken for over two years every single day, which is great for digestion. It truly is. You should be taking a probiotic every single day, guys. Uh, click the link in the description down below. They have proteins for after workouts and pre-workout supplements and omega-3 oils. If you're taking a fish oil, take the plant-based version, that omega-3 oil. They've got sleep and immunity pills as well. Probably take a sleep pill after the show, in fact, mm-hmm. tonight. So whatever you need, check them out, ora.organic, or click the link in the description down below. Yeah, if you uh, want to have that healthy lifestyle that you're craving, but you don't know where to start for supplements, um, or is the best place to go www.ora.organic. They have everything you need for a healthy lifestyle. Um, as you see on the screen there, that protein powder, you can make so many different things with that protein powder and, uh, smoothies. You can have uh, rolled oats. You can have, I mean, you can bake with that protein powder and have it be healthy and delicious. Um, they have probiotics for good, for great gut health. They have, uh, fish oils. They have, uh, pre-workout supplements, um, everything you need, www.ora.organic, and uh, pick up some stuff. You'll thank us later. You'll be thanking us later. Again, subscribe, trying to get to 6,100 subscribers with your help. Smash the like button for us, trying to get to 275 likes tonight. So hit that like button right now if you're with us. We've got 250 of you or so with us right now. If you're watching on replay, hit that like button. Thank you for the super chats and the super thanks. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. I mean, we had this conversation the day they signed him. I think I said, hey, Fenway's a good hitter's park, and Petco isn't. But you don't spend 280 on a player and give them that type of contract and commitment and talk at all about, quote-unquote, ballpark factors. Like There are certain players, like Juan Soto, I'm not thinking about ballpark. Xander Bogarts is a two-time champion coming into San Diego and was pacing for like 3,000 career hits. I'm not thinking, well, it was the ballpark. You're thinking these are just elite 
one of one top two percent type players so you you pay Juan Soto wherever he plays you'll pay Xander Bogarts you're thinking this wherever he plays I don't disagree with you I think Fenway's a great hitter's park and I think Petco's an awful hitter's park a flat-out awful hitter's, hitter's park I think Petco is as bad as it gets when a game isn't played during the day I have no faith they're scoring none zero zilch you mean especially the first three months it just doesn't happen so I, I, I'm fine with blaming ballpark factors to some extent, but when you're giving guys $280 million, there's no excuse. There are no excuses. You have to overcome everything, and that's the expectation. The thing with Xander is when you sign him to that 11-year 11, 11 contract, yes, it is a big-time, very risky, probably not wise decision. But what you're True. really doing is you're saying we we need you here and i know the 11 years is going to get it done but realistically all we really care about is the first five years of that deal mm -hmm. because that's when you're still in your quote-unquote prime and we know it's going to get ugly at the end but we feel like we have the team now to win and so we need you now we need you now for the first like four or five years um, the back end, we'll worry about that later, right? But what we are bringing you here for is not for year six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're bringing you here for year one, two, three, four, five. And you got to be that guy. And he wasn't that guy last year. His numbers at the end of the day might look great. And I, I've heard people tell me, John, I'm sure they've heard tell you too, like Xander had a really good year last year. Oh, he did not have a good year last year. I don't yeah, care what anyone says. Just kind of sneak. I think it was, it was like, uh, it was like inflated. Full I think it was it's very inflated. Full inflated school. by April and September. Yeah. And it counts, but September they were out of it, guys. We all know that. I mean, they had no shot. They at one point they got up to like a 0.8 percent chance of making the yeah. postseason, and they won like and, 15 of 16. And this year he's just going to have to be better. They need their stars to be stars. Tatis right now is playing like a, a star. Manny Machado, I have faith in him that he's going to get hot at some point, and he's been okay. Like he's yeah, not he's been, been like dreadful. I mean, if he was dreadful, his team, I don't know where they would be right now. Probably a couple of games under, but he's been fine. He's been good. He's got hot of late, started out slow, but you know, a couple hits today. I, I'm fine with Manny. Uh, Bogey is the one that you're like eh, about, but hopefully today's the start of, of something here. And going to Colorado is a great place to go to, to get right. And, and hopefully, that's what happens in the next four games is that you give a hot series from Bogarts and you, you pick it up. And at the end of the month, we're kind of sitting here laughing about us talking about moving Xander Bogarts out of the leadoff spot. It's possible. And and Colorado gets the rep for being a great um, power hitting park. And it is because, but the truth is it's a great singles hitters park so big, because of all of the park. space. Yeah. And that's yeah. where Xander really excels. He hits for average, doesn't hit for power. Hopefully it pays off over the next four days. Now to Ma Belvin's point, <laughs> this isn't accurate. This is what we think watching Padres games. He says, why is Petco only an issue for us, though? Opposing teams routinely hit bombs in our park. No excuses. Petco Park last year was 29th in offense for both teams. Twenty. Let me say it again. Petco Park was 29th combined offense. So Padres are only half of that equation. Everyone they play, like the Dodgers, 29th of 30 ballparks. Seattle was the only one worse. They have sat 28th or lower. I don't have it in front of me, but... 28th or lower, five of the last 10 years, I guarantee it. So it's just not a good hitter's yard. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think really people disagree with it. I think my point is this: build a team that plays to the advantage of the ballpark you play in. I don't think they've done it routinely under AJ Preller. They've invested heavily in position players, and that doesn't necessarily solve the crux of the matter. In my opinion, they've tried to overcome the ballpark factor by paying for offense as if they can create it, and it hasn't necessarily happened. They've had moments, they've had players, they have not had the worst offense in baseball, but they're never going to have the best offense in baseball because they play at Petco Park. And I don't care what team in baseball you're fielding. I, I'm telling you right now, if the Dodgers played 81 of their games at Petco Park, they will not finish the year with the best offense in baseball, statistically. They won't. Sorry. Just well, their offense has been... I mean, pretty decent this year. Padres? Yeah. It has. But over, again, over 162 and over these, la you're watching these last three or four games. They can't, I mean, they're not exactly. Well, that's what they're going to have. I mean, that's what's going to happen, John. It's not going to be consistently scoring seven runs a game. They're going to go through stretches like that's, this. Because you're, telling me, you're telling me what I tell you. 
I know when you're and I'm and you're telling me what I usually tell you. I'm telling you that the first of all, whatever they're hitting at Petco Park, I'm telling you right now, it's not a top five. They're not a top five offense at home in baseball. I know that. Look at the numbers. I don't have home road in front of me. You think they're a top five offense in baseball, Petco, this year? I don't I don't think they're as bad as you think they are. I'm telling you at the end of the year, Jim, we're gonna look up and Petco is not gonna be a good hitter's yard. Agree or disagree? I will agree. Thank but you. I also don't think it'll be a bottom five offense in baseball. I think it'll be. They more. weren't a bottom five offense in baseball last year either. I'm talking about home games. Home games? Yeah, I don't think home games are going to be bottom five. I think home games are going to be middle of the pack. Truthfully, they may be, but my point's still valid. <laughs> it's not a great. I'm with you. It's not a great park to hit. It's it's yeah. it's it's been uh, the mo for how they long now? The fence is like a hundred times. It still sucks. I would argue, though, it's not the worst hitting ballpark. I think it's either. I would actually say, here's here's what I would say, and then you tell me. I think the worst hitter's ballpark in baseball, whenever I watch a game there, I'm like, I would never want to hit there in a million years. Is Three, Oracle. two, one. Yeah, Oracle. I mean, it's awful. Yep, the worst. Right, sitting on the water and the climate. and the con- yep. Right. Now, with all that being said, I think the park plays quasi like weirdly small sometimes. Left field line. Yeah, the freaking height of right but it's it's just it's probably similar to petco over the last decade if i was guessing but seattle's always been awful um and then san diego is right there for me i mean name me another one like san francisco seattle san diego give me some yard you're like oh that place sucks so Uh, hard to hit minnesota i don't know maybe it's the climate outdoor outdoor kansas city's hard it's not a small ballpark. That's a big ballpark. Like to to get power there. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, as far if you were to ask baseball players, like I know that um, JD Martinez this year was quoted in saying he didn't want to go to the Giants because he just hates Oracle. Right. Makes sense. And I would say if you ask baseball players, they they probably would put Petco. Not even close to their top list. I mean, they'd probably put in their bottom half of the place they want that hit. Detroit's another one um, that's not really good hitters ballpark. But I think Dude, what you think people you think hitters would not choose San Diego as a bad hitters yard where they no no no. The I think they places. would. I think they would say San Diego is a place they would not want to hit. Yeah yeah yeah. Like well, I think it's why they've overpaid for offense. Truth, right? It's it's an. I would say that it's somewhere that 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 hitters are would be reluctant to be like. Yeah, I want to play there. I want to hit. Let there. me just do this. Let me do this real quick. Okay, I'm 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 at baseball savant. Okay, here we go. Okay, 2021 ballpark factors. Both teams. Petco Park, 25th. Okay, 20. That's 2021. 2022, they go to the NLCS. Right, 89 wins. Ballpark factors, 27th. 2023, last year, Padres, Petco Park. It's not just the Padres; it's the ballpark. 29th. Oh, it was gone so off. Like last you tell year. me, you you tell me, is it is it me? Is it the team or is it the ballpark? What is it this year? Uh, I don't have it. I have a three year rolling average. Um, hold on. Would help you with my argument if I know what that is. Um, this year. I gotta find it. Is I have a three year rolling average, but I can I think it's yeah, to your point, it's it's good. It looks like it's sitting somewhere probably top ten. But it's exaggerated in my opinion, because it's been like ten games. So let's see. Well, it's been ten games. See. It's been ten games, you know. but there's been a lot of games, you know. I see a thirteen run outing, I see a nine run, I see a ten run, I see six run. Yeah. Uh, you know, Toronto five five, like there's a lot of there's six four on the opening day six nine on on the third. They're scoring runs at Petco. All right, we'll see. We'll look up. I don't even know what we're talking about. I mean, I do. My my, my point is this: if I was if I was AJ Preller, <laughs> if I was AJ Preller, I just feel like the investment, the resources invested in position players, probably should have gone more to pitching. With that being said, they've spent a lot of pitching. They spent a lot of Darvish. They spent a lot of Musgrove. They spent a lot in assets to acquire someone like King. Spent a lot on Suarez. Yeah, they spent a lot on C's, so I don't know. 
they spend a lot just in general. Um, okay, what I do want to do is remind our viewers about our friends at Underdog Fantasy uh, because we've been playing, we've been winning. Simple as that. Underdog Playoff Fantasy. time in base and basketball too, so uh, get those plays in. I know. we got a playoff time in basketball. Uh, let's take a look at some Padres plays for tomorrow. All right, so this is game one of a four-game series. By the way, if you use promo code PODSWRAP, you're going to get 100% deposit match up to $100. So promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Click the link in the description down below or go to underdogfantasy.com. You've got a 100% deposit match. Um, well, they, they really like some Dylan Cease, to your point. Higher than seven strikeouts tomorrow? The hell is that? In, what's that? Huh? What? Where did Jim go? Jim left. But that's okay. Um, but again, with the pickums, there's Jim. What happened? I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just couldn't hear you for a second. Weird. Okay. Um, anyway, underdog. They love some Dylan Cease tomorrow. Higher than seven strikeouts. Now I kind of like higher than 16 and a half pitching outs. Can you go five and two thirds at cores? Yeah, you can go five and two thirds, of course. Yeah, someone's gonna hit home. Someone they're gonna have somebody hit a home run I tomorrow. Know. Who's it gonna be Xander? At th- okay, at th- okay, at three to one off today. Charlie Blackman kills the Padres, so he give him kills like- him. So, so let's just say higher than. I'm gonna say higher than that. I'll take the RBIs. One point. So, if we go three for three on this, guys, ten pays two twenty nine fifty, dude. And all we need is Cease going five and two thirds. Now we need a Xander Homer. <laughs> That's tough. Okay, but again, ten pays two twenty nine fifty. I mean, and yeah, we need um, freaking Blackman to have an RBI. But it is Colorado. I mean, and you can flex this thing, by the way, and you can still win by getting two out of three right. So again, promo code Padrap P A D S W R A P. You get a one hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Me and you, man, we've been playing a ton since the start of baseball season. Yeah. And to your point, you can buy sports. You can play NBA playoffs, which are underway. Yeah, you can do NBA playoffs mixed in with Major League Baseball. Uh, the best part is you don't have to bet a lot of money to win big. Um, and these things aren't like crazy, right? Xander Bogarts hit a home run today. Charlie mm-hmm. Blackman kills the Padres. Dylan Cease has been a, a machine. I'm going six out, six innings almost every time out for the Padres this year. Yeah, those things aren't out of the question. And you don't have to be betting two hundred, three hundred dollars to win some money here. Just went, just you know, betting ten bucks pays out to, you know, over two hundred dollars. And the cool part is, once you sign up for Underdog Fantasy, download the app right now, mm-hmm. and you use po- promo code PODSWRAP, P A D S W R A P. Your first one hundred dollars deposited is matched, so you have a hundred free dollars to win real money. You're betting, like essentially you know, money that is given to you to win actual real money. So you're not losing anything. The only upside is, the only downside is you just, okay, you know what? As I was saying, the only downside is Mm -hmm. uh, you lose, but you're also not losing any of the money you're deposited. The upside is you win big. So I think that's a good investment and i think that's a good upside and i think that is something that uh everyone should go do right now why those are the rules those are the rules congratulations <laughs> underdogfancy.com promo code pods wrap all right we're, we're back tomorrow there's a lot to discuss on san diego sports 760 tomorrow what exactly there is to discuss i'm not sure let's get well to your big return is a big thing to yes discuss. my my big return of my big promotion that i'm now off yes. down in gym right yeah um, but... i'm actually sticking around for john and Jim. oh for at least another, I don't know, week. No, and, and longer, longer. Hopefully long term. Maybe like another couple of months. No, more than that. I just need you to be on, I just need to be on the show for the week of the wedding because I ain't going to be there. So, uh, well, I might not be able to go to the wedding then. Uh, just leave early. Okay. Um, JD Gaucho, thank you. Oh, a little Renee Jimenez talk, the new women's coach at UCSB. Oh, great. On a four run with Cal State San Marcos, LFGSB. Was an Aztec assistant coach from 05 to 08. Didn't realize that, J.D. Gaucho, but thank you for your support of the channel. We do appreciate that. Um, what was I going to say? Tomorrow on John and Jim, we'll be talking Padres, Rockies. We'll get you ready for this four-game series. So join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. You can find us on YouTube. Search for John and Jim 
760. And again, we're back tomorrow night. Wrap-up show Monday evening. Padres Rockies will be back with you tomorrow night following game one of that four-game series. We'll see if the Padres can win the series. And if they do, they'll be at least two games over 500 when they uh, come. Do they come back home after the four-game series? Yep, they play the uh, Philadelphia Phillies this weekend. Oh, it's my first trip to the Naughty Barrel in 2024. About freaking time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's only been a month. The owner's That's like, Who, you do this alone? I'm like, no. Yeah, actually, you have so far. I have. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, join us on San Diego Sports 760. Find us on YouTube. And again, subscribe to the wrap-up show. Trying to get to 6,100 subscribers. We need your help. Smash the like button for us. 275 is the goal. Where are we at right now, Jim, before we duck out? Uh, here? We are. Hold on. We're not close, guys. One, we're, not, like. we're not even close. We have over 250 people watching us on a Sunday night. Every single one of you people watching us, thank you. We appreciate you. Hit that like button. That's all we like ask. That. You know, just hit that like button. Over just 250 plus in the chat right now. If you're watching on your phone, if you're watching on your television, if you're watching on your laptop. Can you do it on TV? How do you do that? You can do it on TV if you download the YouTube app, John. It's very wow. simple. Very I've easy. Done that. It's very easy. Yes. I watch YouTube on TV. Okay. I watch it on my cell phone. Yeah, it's very simple. So hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, If you have not already subscribed, if everybody here watching us is a subscriber, perfect. But everybody has not hit that like button that is watching us right now. So hit that like button, and uh, we would very much appreciate it. We see you, dude, in your bed with your wife. It's okay. We don't know who likes these videos. We don't even know who dislikes these videos. It doesn't show up. So if you're scared to hit the like button because you think that we're going to see you and if you're one of the people out there that's watching us, it's like, oh, I don't really want to be seen watching. Closet watcher or something. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We can't see who likes it. Like All we see is the the likes and the dislikes. So um, Trust us. Trust trust us. Hit that like button. Um, Find us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Thank you for the super thanks if you're here on replay. Thank you for the memberships as well. Support our partners, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. I know Mark has been in the chat here tonight. Mark, we appreciate you, man. We really do. Um, Our title sponsor, if you've got an insurance need, Mark can help and he can save you money. Click the link in the description down below. Aura, if you're looking to get healthier, ORA.organic, plant-based nutritional products. And again, Pods Wrap is the promo code. P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, a 100% deposit match, up to $100. Join us tomorrow on John and Jim at 3 p.m. Then we'll see you tomorrow night for the wrap-up show. For Jim, I'm John. Peace. Peace out, brother.